I'm Dr. Mike Tatola, and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Inside Dentistry's Product Talk. We are on location in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, in the office of Dr. Ted Kroll. Ted is a diplomat of the American Board of Pediatric Dentistry, has published over 300 peer-reviewed articles on pediatric dentistry and restorative materials, and is an Inside Dentistry board member, and we're here today to speak with him about Bisco's Theracal PT. Ted, thank you so much for having us into your office today. Good to see you, Michael. Well, it's nice to be here. As you know, there's a new member in the Thera family from Bisco. It's Theracal PT, where the PT stands for pulpotomy. It's a dual-cured, resin-modified calcium silicate material that's biocompatible. I'll be honest, I haven't done a pulpotomy in probably 30 years. Um, what do you look for in a material when you're looking for a pulpotomy material? What's important to you as a pediatric dentist? Well, Mike, not only is uh, Theracal PT new to the, um, uh, to the Bisco line, it's new to the pulpotomy line, and it's a, there's been a progression of materials throughout uh, uh, history. And wh what we're looking for is a material that uh, is biocompatible, can re uh, release calcium, is kind to the residual pulp because a pulpotomy is not a pulpectomy. It doesn't remove all the pulp tissue. And we need a material that can re uh, release calcium and is not detrimental to the remaining pulp and can seal the chamber uh, once it's set. Also, we're looking for something that works quickly mm -hmm. uh, because we have, we have children, patients, and uh, time is of the essence of getting things done. I know that Theracal PT has an alkaline pH once it sets. I think it's about 11.5 or something like that. Why is that important for a material like this? It's very important because that ability um, permits healing of the residual pulp and it becomes quiescent. It becomes uh, physiologically quiescent deep within the chamber uh, and allows that tooth to heal and maintain itself for anywhere from three to eight years depending on the tooth that's being treated. That, that, that's a great thing that you bring up about the difference between like a pulpotomy and a pulpectomy or an adult root canal. We still have tissue that we need to be kind to, that we're trying to encourage to live. It's not the search and destroy mission that, exactly that a adult root canal is. How's the radio opacity on Theracal PT? Radio opacity is excellent. It, uh, it really shows up nice and bright white on the, uh, on the radiograph. You can see exactly where the material is. Uh, and that makes it good not only for a pulpotomy, but also uh, for a liner or base, uh, which is another use for uh, for Theracal PT. I know that it's got a minimum of 45 seconds working time. Is that, how do you feel about that? Is that good? More than enough, Plenty more time. than enough. Once you establish hemostasis, you've got, it's very, very quick to uh, inject the material, hit it with a light to get your initial hardening, uh, and then deep within the material, you have your, uh, your chemical cure, uh, and 45 seconds is way beyond what you need. You know, it's funny, you don't have the luxury of time that we do as GPs where we can spend two, three hours uh, doing a root canal. You've got the patient's limited attention for a short period of time, so it seems like being able to move quickly would be helpful. Uh, I know Theracal PT also has a unique hydrophilic resin matrix. Tell me a little about that. Well, the, the hydrophilicity is a great advantage. Uh, Resin-based composites are generally uh, hydrophobic, which repels water, and the hydrophilic nature of Theracal PT uh, absorbs the moisture, which is inherent to the, uh, to the intra, uh, intra canal mm -hmm. or intra chamber. Um, so that uh, facilitates the transfer of ions, the transfer of calcium. So it's really, uh, really a remarkable development in uh, in this type of material, pulpotomy material. Well, you were nice enough to share a case with us where you use Theracal PT. Why don't you go ahead and walk us through this? Well, here's the here's a five year old with a. Uh, I believe the lesion probably started out as a hypomineralization, but it became carious, and the carries uh, infected the tooth really to the pulp chamber. We could see that radiographically, mm -hmm. um, and here. Uh, we've isolated the tooth with uh, infiltration anesthesia. Mm -hmm. uh, we put the rubber dam on, and uh, in this case, I put an orthodontic band over the tooth to stabilize the clamp because the, the crown wasn't very uh, tall, uh, and the orthodontic band stabilizes. So we have a beautiful working field that can control the moisture and the cheeks. That's great. I've never seen that before. I recognize it as an, yeah. as an ortho band because it's got the numbers yes. on the side, but I, I didn't recognize it as a Toffelmeyer. So that's a really ingenious way yes. to try to get yeah. isolation, get your clamp. Yeah. The orthodontic band is um, uh, pushed into place with a, a serrated amalgam condenser. Okay, well, that's really smart. And here we've uh, removed the um, infected uh, pulp chamber tissue, and uh, we've got bleeding from the pulp stumps into the, into the root canals. 
and now we need to control the bleeding. Mm -hmm. And here we are with a, uh, I had an initial cotton pellet, which we uh, soaked up the, the bleeding, and this is a second sterile cotton pellet dipped in saline, mm -hmm. and we let it sit for 45 to 60 seconds to control the bleeding. And almost all the time, that's all you need to control really? the bleeding. Um, occasionally you'll have some more seepage, and once in a while we'll take a very dry ferric sulfate pellet um, to, uh, uh, to establish complete hemostasis before injection of the material. Is the magic the saline or, or the pressure from the cotton pellet? Because I, I remember back in school we were using chemicals, former cresol or hyphricators or things like that. I, I'm, so, I'm really shocked that you can just achieve hemostasis with a cotton pellet. The, the pressure of the cotton okay. pellet, you're really squishing it in there with a ball burnisher or a uh, amalgam condenser and the pressure and the patient's natural uh, he hemostatic mechanism is what forms That seems like a far product. healthier way to do it with yes. a lot less side effects than yes. using chemicals or, or anything correct. else. And there you go. Now here we are, and this was this uh, um, bleeding was totally um, controlled mm -hmm. with just the cotton pellet, so we didn't need ferric sulfate or any other hemostatic agent. And now we're ready for injection of okay. the Theracal PT. And here we are. Um, Bisco did a marvelous job in uh, the dual, the double-barreled delivery system, and this injection tip has a mixing uh, uh, mechanism mm -hmm. whereby, as the material is injected through the mixer, it blends perfectly and then comes out the cannula deep into the preparation. And as and you withdraw to avoid uh, entrapping air bubbles, you withdraw as you inject. Okay. And here we are injecting to overfill. Okay. Now I can see why it actually goes so quickly, where you said 45 seconds yes. is plenty of time. If there's no mixing to be done, you can go right with the tip into the prep and just start injecting and then back it out. You could be done with that in five seconds. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And you overfill it slightly, like you said. Yes. And then we hit it with a light for uh, 20 seconds okay. to 10 second exposures. So the first couple millimeters of the material is hardened perfectly. And we know deep within the material, we, uh, we don't know exactly how deep the light is penetrating, That's right. but we do know that the, um, uh, the chemical um, polymerization right. is going underneath. Uh, and we, uh, we go to overfill, uh, so we make sure all the margins are uh, right. covered. And, and so because of that dual cure nature, you just need one layer, whether it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight millimeters deep. It exactly. really doesn't matter. But you're curing the surface to get it started and get those first couple millimeters hard. That's true. Because you're probably going to go in and do some shaping at this yes. point. So here we are overfilled. Uh, and it's hardened. And in this particular case, there's some question whether you need to add another material, but in this case, I used an inverted cone okay. to create a mechanical undercuts, and I uh, covered um, the, uh, the, um, the preparation within the Theracal PT with a resin-based composite, um, which also happened to be dual cured. Uh, and here we are getting ready to remove the um, orthodontic band okay. uh, to do our, our crown preparation. Okay. I did most of the crown preparation with the rubber dam in place. I was able to do, make my meso oh, slice nice. okay. and do my buckle slices and lingual slices, but I had to take off the rubber dam to get the distal preparation uh, perfected. And you can see a couple of vertical slots which will engage the cement for better retention. I like that. Yeah, retention and keep it from rotating. Right. And if I, I haven't done one of those preps in 30 years, but if I remember correctly, you're trying to get rid of the height, the contour, and any bulges. Exactly So you true. can go in and start crimping. Yeah, the purpose is that the stainless steel crown form replaces what was lost to carries, what was lost to preparation. Uh, and you're, you're gaining original form, function, and size with a contact area. So it's, it's total replication of what right. was there before. That's great. And there and, it is. And there we are a couple months later, serving its function, good healing. Um, Gingiva looks happy. Gingiva looks good and everything's, uh, everything's rolling along. I like your anatomy that you put on there. Oh, sure, <laughs> yeah. Well, you can thank the company for that. And is this a couple months later? Yeah, this is a couple months uh, post-operative. Um, the the six-year molar, the uh, permanent first molar is coming in. And the mesial margin, I'm very proud of. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I'd get an A in that in dental school, but right. I'd get probably an A minus for the distal <laughs> margin because there's just a smidgen where I didn't crimp quite enough, but it's perfectly clinical. Uh, yeah, I think that's that. difficult, especially because you can't tell that until you take 
a radiograph exactly anyway. So true. it's a little difficult. That's right. And even if you tried to do it before it was cemented, it could shift around. So right. it's one of those things. Well, yeah. I remember my dad, who was a dentist, always told me, I complained about stainless steel crowns being hard. He said, only the first thousand are hard. That's exactly. And the next yeah, thousand are right. much easier. Yeah. Well, Ted, thank you so much for sharing that case with us. It's been a long time since I've been in a pediatric dental office. So I love the motifs here and the video games playing and the noises in the background. It's fun to be in an office like this, much more relaxed than a regular GP office. So thanks again for having us here. Pleasure, Mike. Thank you. Well, that'll wrap it up for this episode of Product Talk. We want to thank Dr. Kroll for inviting us into his office. So on behalf of myself, Ted, and all of us here at Inside Dentistry, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. Mm -hmm.